Often when we think of God's program advancing, of souls being one, of cultures being infiltrated with the subversive message of Jesus' Lordship and the Gospel, we think of action, missionaries being sent, martyrs dying, this sort of thing, evangelistic activity, compassionate activity. But at this moment in Israel's history, which we've read about, it was personal forgiveness that moved God's program forward. It was just, I forgive you. Of course, I don't hold it against you. That moved the program forward. If he had not, if he withheld forgiveness, none of this would have worked. It was the good character of Joseph almost by itself that made this possible. No doubt they were expecting the worst, but somehow, as they look at him, they read his expression of his face and the tone of his voice as, despite all that they believe, as somehow welcoming and warm and inviting. That the come near is not a threat, but an invitation. They can sense it somehow. And so they obey the call, and they hesitantly stood and walked to him, or perhaps even crawled as people respond sometimes in unusual ways when they are dismayed. It's very possible. You could imagine some getting up and walking, some crawling, and then halfway realizing that the rest are standing or something like that. This was very likely what happens. Then his next words to them put their guilt squarely into focus. The first thing he says, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into, uh, into Egypt. That's like the one thing they would like him not to say. And he says, he leads with this. He brings it up right away. But his purpose is not to condemn them, but to reassure them of his forgiveness. Reconciliation is not possible at all unless this is mentioned. All of his interactions from when he first saw them have been designed to bring them all to this point. And now that time has come. And the first thing to be said is to deal with this thing from the past. He immediately speaks to them about it. But notice the way he speaks to them. What's the first thing he says? What a thing. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. Don't be upset with yourselves. Don't be angry. Don't accuse one another. Don't get mad at each other. Don't live in fear. Don't be distressed. It's all right. Yes, you sold me here, but God was the one who sent me here to preserve life. I've got a mission to save lives, so don't be upset. It's incredible. What a word. Think of the nobility and the depth of absolute forgiveness on His part toward them. I mean, if there was any desire to get them, it would have manifested itself. He would have let them squirm for a while. And you might say, well, he let them squirm earlier, but he, that wasn't about that. Remember, it was all about a test to see, have they changed? Are they repentant? Because if he just came to them and said, I'm Joseph, what are you going to do about it, boys? They'd have just asked for, pleaded for mercy and forgiveness and lived the rest of their days in fear. They never would have been reconciled. The family would never would have come together. But having put them through all these tests, these men are changed and transformed men. And they're at the position now where they can truly be reconciled to him. And having all these conditions of reconciliation met, he doesn't withhold. Beloved, think of that. We're told, in so far as it's possible, right, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. So many times, what that means is, like, the conditions could be met, and now it depends on you. And you say no. Right? There's so many times where it's like, it's, it's not that there's anything objectively stopping us from reconciling, it's that we're not willing. And here we see that all these conditions have been met, and Joseph himself was super willing to forgive, to reconcile. This is what he wanted. He was pursuing it. There was nothing outside of him to keep reconciliation from happening. Before there had been. But what we see about Joseph is the moment those barriers are gone, he breaks and he's weeping upon their necks, forgiving them and reconciling with them. What a thing. What a remarkable picture. He has every reason to punish them, but his heart is not in that. He has been pursuing reconciliation this whole time, and now it is finally 
possible. He's overcome with emotion at that fact. All of the words you read about from Joseph in this, this first speech you ought to imagine as coming um, through tears, through emotional pauses, through sudden breathless, bre breathless heaves of emotion. He's not sobbing all the way through this, but it is emotional. It is charged. He's sensing his emotions rising to an uncontrollable level. He sent people out, and then he did the business about which he was so emotional. And you ought to imagine just tears coming as he speaks. You see, it's not this cold, this cold thing when he, <laughs> to tell them, that uh, don't be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me here before you to preserve life. And it's just kind of a doctrinal truth. He's feeling this. And he looks at his brothers with tears in his eyes and says, don't, don't be distressed. Don't be afraid. Don't be angry with each other. You ha having met me, you're not meeting your judgment and your end. You don't understand. I've come to learn... Over my time here, while I've been here, particularly in these last few years, he can tell them, surely, that the reason God sent me here was to preserve life. But at this moment in Israel's history, which we've read about, it was personal forgiveness that moved God's program forward. It was just, I forgive you. Of course, I don't hold it against you. That Move the program forward. If he had not, if he had withheld forgiveness, none of this would have worked. It was the good character of Joseph, almost by itself, that made this possible. Beloved, this was obviously a tremendous day for this family, but it has implications for the entire rest of redemptive history, and we don't often think of things that way. These small actions, like personal forgiveness, are larger than they appear to us. There is a great program of God advancing in the world, but that program advances not mainly on the backs of a few missionaries throughout thousands of years of church history, but rather through the lives of Christians whose significant choices and decisions in this cause of Christ are often unnoticed by us, are heard of by very few, but are precious and necessary in the sight of God. This is how it is. You know, you think of, you know, we can read about, you know, maybe William Carey going to India. And it's like, okay, but what has William Carey done in India in the last several hundred years? It's like almost no effect. And if he had any effect, if he's had any effect, and he has, it's because of the faithfulness, the day-to-day -day faithfulness of those who came after. It's because of the Christian character of people who were consistent Christians in the midst of a perverse culture. For hundreds of years, whose names none of us know. And honestly, if we, were, if we were told maybe about half of their lives, probably most of us wouldn't even care to know. Until we have the right perspective about these things, and all of a sudden now, that thing that they wouldn't even think to tell you was the thing that opened up this, this whole avenue to the gospel in this town that, oh, this other Christian that all of us know was because of that. And not that that's the goal, but just... Understand, some things you do know about are because of this little thing that didn't even matter. Didn't seem to matter, but was massively consequential. When our character reflects God's righteousness, when our hands and feet are put to service in the world just as Jesus' were, right? when our tongues are full of God's saving message, when our heart's full of the same loving concern that He had, when our faith and our confidence in God stands in a world that's opposed to us, when our lives are a fragrance of Christ where we go, then in that way the gospel of God permeates the world. And as believers, as priests of God, as ambassadors for Christ, we fill the world with the leaven of the gospel. Character matters. These little things aren't always so little. <laughs>